Shinichi Sumizaki, Churur, Maki Girl, Bama Game, Garner P57, John John 58, and Herb 64. This week's community spotlights are dedicated to the finalists of the 2021 Epic Mega Jam. And so, the winners are going to be announced during Inside Unreal. Stay tuned to see which teams came out on top. Hey, and welcome to Inside Unreal, a weekly show where we learn, explore, and celebrate everything Unreal. I'm your host, Amanda Shade, and with me we have all kinds of guests today. So we'll kick it off with, kick it off with Ben Mears, Community Manager from SideFX slash Houdini. Hey uh, everyone, hi. great to be here. <laughs> Mike, Production Manager at GameTextures.com. How you doing guys? Good, glad to be here. And Hannes, a technical project manager at Dynamedian. Hello, pleasure to be here. And of course, Sky here on the community team at Epic. Hey. So it is the 2021 Epic Mega Jam results stream. We were so excited for all of y'all to be here. We had over 500 games and over 3,000 participants, which is definitely a jam record here for Unreal Engine. And there were some, there were some games, y'all. There are lots and lots of games. We saw cats and penguins and spaceships, robots, aliens, uh, computer parts, like all kinds of things. And what it was, it was quite a spectacle. And we're really, really excited to be able to um, share just a piece of. Uh, the the content with you. We do have a reel going on um, here in the middle of the screen. Um, so you'll be able to see a majority of the sampling of games here uh, for the Epic Mega Jam. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a lot, but we were absolutely thrilled to finally have narrowed it down into results. Um, it's never, ever an easy task, uh, that's for sure. But... Um, yeah, we're it's it's always a pleasure though. Like, uh, we are consistently impressed with the talent the community has. What you all were able to make in just seven days is always absolutely outstanding, and we're really pumped to to show them off today. So, let's see. Do we just want to jump in? Anything? I guess for those of you, if you're joining, if you didn't participate in the jam, it was a seven day event. So we, the theme was running out of space, which could be taken in any number of different ways and, and to interpreted whether it's physical space, um, environmental space, mental space in your brain, um, running out of outer space. There's all kinds of different ways you could take it. Um, and you'll definitely see the, the, Results of that here shortly. Um, but yeah, so teams had seven days to make a game from scratch and get to some sort of shippable, playable build for us. So it is always, always a treat. But shall we jump right in? Let's see. So the first, I mean, unless people don't want to know who the winners are, I guess. But um, oh, we, we can just cancel the stream. Nice That's fine. Laugh, I don't think. I'll just skip it. <laughs> um, so all all of the games were judged on um, the unique use of the theme, the fun factor, the visuals, and the audio. So they were. Um, scored in each of those categories. And so first up, we will have the Army of One modifier. So this was the best game developed by a solo developer. So the winners of this category will be receiving a custom Falcon Northwest laptop that has our rad Epic Mega Jam theme on it. In addition to that magical laptop, uh, a Houdini Indie license, 
a month, uh, GameTextures.com subscription, various marketplace uh, plugins and assets from Code Respawn and Maui. And so without further ado, the winner of the Army of One category is Container City by Perfume. Ooh. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> That's always a little this awkward a with those game. drum rolls and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's the best. This actually so, is um, just going to dive into sort of a medium difficulty level so that it's a bit easier to... I don't have the skill for the hardest. Um, this is a really great <laughs> game visually and just all together. Um, a great all together piece. Words are hard sometimes. So the trick is, like, you've got to essentially stack these containers that you have these little people to live in uh, to save them from the drowning world. Um, and as you progress each level, you gain more of these either containers, uh, the wires to connect the solar panels, and so on. Um, let me just see. Um, one of the really cool things as well, I do like the customization in the game. Um, even though it's still stressful to take the time to customize what color containers you have because you don't want these folk to drown. Um, but overall as well, there is this sort of nostalgic element um, to old um, browser-based Java-based games as well. I feel like there was, brings me back to playing sort of similar, albeit lower, um, what's the right word there? Like visual um, fidelity. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, like back in school um, when you're supposed to be doing work on computers and you're just <laughs> tabbing out into the browser-based games, and there's there's definitely a nostalgic element for me there. But I wonder if know, kids still do that. They have to. <clears throat> but yeah, so you have, and there's lots of pieces of this game, right? So it's like you have your container and it sounds like what that holds four people and then you um the solar panels themselves uh aren't or attach solar panels to make a cozy living space right and then the cables actually help them share energy so that people can stay there and are a means to like secure the containers to the platforms <laughs> or to each other um, for better or worse right if you lose one you can yeah. <laughs> suddenly have a, an entire chain of containers that are falling off <laughs> you know you're, you're like testing that. something sky never figured out like do you lose <laughs> people if nope they're still alive they're down there just living their best life underwater <laughs> yeah they're, they're not going to do... Yeah, see, that's what happens. Um, so if I showcase on the hardest, you get one singular platform, um, which is interesting. Because obviously, ideally, you would stack it really neatly, and apparently I'm not able to do that. Um, that's just a personal <laughs> skill level. I haven't achieved that yet. Tidy Jenga skills? Yeah, it's, it's been a while. <laughs> But yeah, like, you know, there's there's definitely clear messages and ties to the theme, right? They are absolutely running in, out of space. The planet has run out of space. And now you've got this tiny little platform that they're all trying to uh, live off of. Um, and just like visually, they uh, put this together very, very well. It feels um, very, it's vibrant, right? Like for being such a simplistic design, it all feels very cohesive. So yeah. Um, Wonderful, wonderful work uh, to the Perfune team. All right. Should we move on to our next modifier? I mean, I'm happy to just keep playing. You're if just going to play this, this one. This is the <laughs> stream now. Yeah, this is the stream. Is it, um, is it possible to win this one? Nope. This is I mean... I've gotten pretty high and built up before, um, but then I'll do something like that, and everything will just be chaos. Um, <laughs> well, no, the thing is, though, like I was pointing out before, I don't think that they actually die or you don't lose any points whenever they go off. I think they're just living their best life underwater now. <laughs> yeah, it's now busted. Solve the climate crisis well, with watertight containers. <laughs> 
They're aquatic homes. Yeah. <laughs> People are sprouting gills and just living underneath the water. Yeah, it's Absolutely. a brilliant game. Yeah. I highly recommend it. Yay! Yeah, nice work. It was fun. Yep. And keep in mind, all these games still live on our HIO Epic Mega Jam page. So if you want to check them out and play them for yourself or, um, you know, these and any of the other ones that you're seeing on the site, like, please do and share your feedback with them. There's places for comments and um, let the creators know, like, what you think of their game. So next up is the Envisionary Environments, sponsored by NVIDIA, for the best usage of environmental effects in a game. So uh, NVIDIA sponsored with one of their studio laptops. You're looking at an XPS 17 laptop from Dell, and it includes a an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 uh, graphics card. So it's packing some punch. In addition to that, you'll see a Game Jam feature on GeForce Now's service um, and get a GeForce Now Thursday spotlight from NVIDIA. In addition to the Houdini Indie License Month uh, GameTextures.com subscription and some sweet assets from Code Respawn and Maui. So the winner of the Envisionary Environments modifier category is Awkward Drumroll! Drum roll. Uh, Body Boy from the Purple Team. Woo. Yay! Nice. Woo! Congrats! <laughs> Look at this beautiful game. Yeah, this one there was, was just so many great though. takes on the theme, in my opinion. Like some really just awesome, awesome like visualizations of the theme, and it was really like, it was a good spread like all over the place when I came to it. If y'all want to take a closer look at it. Yeah, there's, there's so much to this game that I don't think at first would automatically meet the eye because there's there's so many great visual effects going on. Um, and that can sometimes be almost harder to kind of concentrate sometimes. But I think in this case, it really isn't because Vibrancy helps you feel more involved in the game um, as you travel around. The aim is to collect all the folders and files um, and avoid these viruses because they can do that and <laughs> invert axes and stuff like that, so it gets a little chaotic. Um, but our aim is to gather as much files as we can uh, before the system crash and upload them here into the, the cloud, I believe it is. Um, Let's try and do this properly. <laughs> do the game some justice. Well, it's I, just I think I such a rich with environment. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, it's definitely a rich environment. Uh, <laughs> I just I don't know. I when I when we jumped when I jumped into this one, it was just really fun. Because uh, it, it just it's like a one to one, not one to one, but it's like a just a, you know a circuit board like inside your computer. You definitely get that vibe. You get definitely feel that as you're running around. Okay, I think I got a bit lost there. It's fine. Yeah, this one was challenging. Did anybody complete it? Funny as well, because earlier I had another run through and I did so much better than I'm doing right now. Yeah, this is uh, a very complete experience. It's, the environment is amazing. Um, so much going on. It's, you know, it brings you in, fills you with joy. Um, distracted there.
I will just go to say that all of these games are amazing that we're going to showcase today as well. Um, but my skill in these games may be questionable, but that's not on the game. That's on me. game where they, it's like a good example of like uh, like simple mechanics but but really dialed in and done right because so I think you have uh, all you really have is a jump and a dash if I remember yeah right now. I always forget that the dash exists and that's probably why I'm also doing so badly does it have a double jump too yeah right uh, yes yeah, but they it's just they felt really good in game because that counter is ticking up, right? And that, if you keep an eye on that, uh, I also think you can dash against that uh, bridge right there, Sky, behind you. Oh, it dashed in the wrong direction for me. Right, okay. Which I thought was a cool way to sort of like mechanically add parts of the uh, environment gameplay in a way that lets you interact with it. Yeah, I think the, the materialization of the platforms is my weak point. Um, so if I actually utilize the dash like it's probably supposed to, I probably wouldn't have had so much of a harder time. Oh. And the good thing as well, when you do, uh, you are full of data, you slow down. Uh, which I think is really cool as well. Almost like a separate reminder that you need to go and drop all that data off into the cloud. I didn't even realize that. I was dumped way long before that, so that's that's pretty fun. All right. Do you want to jump on to our next modifier category? So, for the next category, we have... So, congrats again to Body Boy from, and Purple Team. Uh, sounds like they're in chat, so definitely give them some love. Uh, the next one up is the Kit Basher for the game with the best use of a Kit Bash 3D monumental asset. So, um, super appreciative of Kit Bash 3D joining the Game Jam uh event and you know they have really great premium 3d asset kits um, so check them out if you haven't um, and during the game jam they provided their monumental sample asset pack so you could pick one and use it uh, during or for the modifier category um, so the winners of the kit basher will get $1,500, a $1,500 credit to kit bash 3d store distributed among the team members the one year Houdini Indie license, the GameTextures.com subscription, and surprise, surprise, the assets from Code Respawn and Mobby. So we're always excited to have those marketplace sponsors with us as well. And so the winner of the Kid Basher category is -da -da, Seekers from MicroWasp. I love this game. This game was this my personal game. favorite, I would say. It's just the, the screen, like this loading screen is amazing. Learn rather mm -hmm. the main menu. I just, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, the main menu is absolutely amazing and this retro vibe, um, which is fantastic. But we're gonna go ahead and jump right in. Yeah, so you can see the, where they've really leveraged those assets are your background environment. 
and they don't even feel like the original assets at this point because <laughs> they've reskinned them but it, it does give this nice feel of a full city um, very much in line with the design and vibes of their um, whole game right and um, and that's really the idea behind kit bashing is that you can use pieces and customize them maybe in a very minimal way uh, but make them unique and build up and save yourself time using these assets instead of having or reusing assets over and over right instead of having to make everything um, uniquely gameplay wise this one had a bit of a curve for me uh, just probably speaking more about me than it is about the game but uh, it was once you get it, it's a lot of fun. I didn't realize at first that the the game literally tells you what files you're supposed to be doing. So I was trying to scramble around and assemble all these different files, files together in their yeah. mind. Kind of what I'm doing yeah. now. Yeah. You want to give so a premise of the game? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole mechanics of the game basically uh, you have it's you're defragging essentially. So you're basically just trying to put all the files of the same type in order so that the the uh, larger B or whatever that's going around the circles is able to pick them all up in a row and, you know, put them together. Uh, and that, that little pop-up that happens on the bottom of the sky screen is basically just telling you what file is going to be next, and it gives you, like, the bar countdown as to when it's, when it's saying it's supposed to be done. Yeah. So it's, this, you're, like, in the hard drive and you're trying to organize them for the seeker. I mean, and this is essentially like a right? like a hard disk, right? Like a disk drive right, yeah. itself. Mm -hmm. You're on the top of the disk drive. Uh, mm -hmm. Visualized. Yeah, I sure don't do it justice. Um, as I said, will be the case for all games because of my skill. <laughs> um, but I highly recommend playing this. It's quite peaceful as well. The music is great. Um, yeah. The visuals are amazing. That has that kind of warm vibe. And overall, as you can see, there's they've put a lot of thought into this, and I think that in itself um, is great. I actually didn't realize. I really this enjoyed how the calm until, uh... music. Excuse me. No, you're fine. Go ahead. All right. Sorry. Um, I really want, just want to say I really like how the calm music is kind of complementing the rather stressful uh, gameplay where you have to, you know, think fast and move fast and uh, keep an overview of everything. But the, you know, the sound of music it makes it feel as if it's just, you know, um, your daily task, and uh, you can just um, uh, go with it into it with a with a, a clear mind. I, I I like that about this. Yeah, this just feels like those lo-fi streams that you watch or you know put on your music in the back background and just totally vibe to, right? <laughs> what is this uh, uh, lo-fi lo-fi mix to uh, de defrag your hard drive to? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Do we even need to defrag our hard drives anymore? I don't know. Maybe I should. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> For hard disk, you're supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hundred percent recommend playing. So when you have the time, definitely do. You'll do it more justice than I will. Yeah, this one was pretty addictive. You go into kind of like a Zen state as you're lining everything up. It's that music. But it soon does become good. chaotic as well. <laughs> but yeah, the music like, uh, totally, like, totally taps into that yeah. zen state. Mm. I think that's what throws you off guard as well a little bit. I think it's it works well together because at first it's, like you said, the learning curve that comes with it. At first you're like, all right, I'm just going to go on a color sense and that's what kind of what I've been doing. Um, and all of a sudden you have all of this space taken up. Um, and then you, you have a harder job because you can only collect so many at once. But that's at the limit. So then you have to remember the sequence of which you picked up so that you can place them where you want to place them. Um, and one of the most frustrating things as well is when the... the where is it? Um, this comes down and drops them like that, especially if you've 
finally figured out that you're got one slot left and then it jumps in and you're like oh okay now i need to find space for that and later in the game you're trying to get all the way over here to to grab the things you need um straightingly good is how i would describe that <laughs> but yeah all right shall we move on to so again this was seekers by micro wasp and they're taking home the kit basher uh, modifier category awards so next up we actually have uh the conductor category so this was actually sponsored yes. by Dyna Medium. So thanks, Hannes, and your team. Yes. This is for the game with the best storytelling through music. Um, and so uh, why don't why don't you say a little bit about Dyna Medium and um, about the category? I guess real quickly. Um, yeah, of course. They'll get what a license from We Love Indies, a Boom FX uh, library pack, or a Boom plugin. Again, the Houdini and Game Textures license and subscriptions and additional marketplace assets. So take it away, Hannes. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you very much. It was a pleasure for the Animedian to uh, sponsor this uh, modifier, the um, conductor modifier, uh, best storytelling through music. So what we do with We Love Indies, it's a sub-label of the Animedian to provide affordable audio assets for uh, um, game creators, especially, you know, the indie teams. Um, that is uh, both in music and in sound design. Uh, so you can, um, you know, uh, if you need any any pre-made sound effects, or even if you need custom-made uh, music or sounds, you can always send us um, uh, send us a message through We Love Indies, and uh, then we can see if we can find um, a plan that suits you for your budget. Because we know that indie budgets are tight, but you still want your game to sound great. Because audio is a very important part of the game, and. Um, I think this also showed, you know, was also visible in the in the entries in the jam that we've had, and many games uh, really did a great job. I can't stress how hard it must be to come up with this, you know, in just a week. Um, but one game in particular uh, for this modifier stood out. So um, if we can get a drum roll, please. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> the uh, yeah, the winner of of the modifier conductor is the game. Time bro. Tim Yeah, by Garbage Collective. Woo! <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. this game really stood out um because it uh did uh really try to implement, you know, the um the uh, the the modifier objective, which is storytelling through music. You know, um having a music game is often associated with just being a simple, well, not a simple rhythm game. I mean, rhythm games are hard to play, but, you know, just um, play along rhythm games. And it's hard to implement music as an element into an actual, you know, gameplay loop, a story unfolding. And T Timber really did a great job in, in putting the background music in accordance to the gameplay. You're this little metronome, you jump in the beat of the music, and then you have to find um, the the instruments and make them complete like you have to find the bow for the cello and so on you go out of the space out of the little space that you have and you try to enlarge the space um, by bringing music to to the world and um, whenever you you know um, complete another instrument the music changes and with the music the world changes and this is what we really liked that the music is not just uh, um, trying to set the right mood for the game but it also advances and progresses the whole gameplay along with the map and um, I think uh, we are really agreed in the team that this is uh, the winner for this category really really uh, great job well done the developers and a very wholesome game as well <laughs> love the aesthetic and you know when we're talking about games that you could just like put on in the background and definitely relax to right this is so on that list but it, it provides such a complete experience right um, absolutely yeah. keep worried you're gonna jump off the world there sky yeah, this <laughs> this game gives me such anxiety um for that reason um like <laughs> Yeah, it's about running out of the space that you can see, so running out of your comfort zone. <laughs> no! Awesome. Got the winners in chat. Congratulations. Um, really, really wonderful game. 
Oh no. Great work. There we go. <laughs> oh no! Um, for those it's also very the... forgiving if you fall down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Chad's got you. There's a seven day jam for those asking. I think I can just watch you play this all afternoon. Until my anxiety gives up. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. This is really, really great. Um, okay. So definitely go play it. We've dropped the links in chat. Again, many, many congrats to uh, Tambor and from or the game Tambor by Garbage Collective. All right. Congrats again. <laughs> so the next game or the next category that we'll be announcing is uh, the puppeteer category. So this was for the game with the best custom animations produced for the jam. So this was sponsored by Reillusion. Um, they're known for their uh, development of real-time cinematic animation, virtual production, and motion capture tools. Um, really, really great team over at Reillusion. The winners of this category will be receiving um, iClone 7, 3D Exchange 7 Pipeline and Unreal Live Link plugin from Reillusion, um, the Houdini Indie License and Game Texture subscriptions, and the material marketplace assets rather from Code Respawn and Maui. So, for the Puppeteer, the winner of the Puppeteer modifier category is Reclaim the Kingdom by Work Hard. I love it. Clay hard. Da, da, da. That means a bit. That was such a fun game. By the elaborate machinations of those who once sought to escape the loam of terracotta below, the last of the High Kings have long since departed and abandoned it to its fate. The lands crumble away day by day, and little by little, those left behind find themselves trapped and increasingly running out of space. Loyal and militant hardbox, richly equipped and armoured by their former overlord's jealousy, guard that which remains of the castle. Sorcerous snakes venture forth from their porcelain towers <laughs> in search of an easy meal. Alpaca fleckers and llama lasers roam the streets and courtyards, still carrying elaborate machines built for a war that never came, gleefully looking for an opportunity to deploy them. And then there's this melodious buffoon. Another foolish adventurer waltzing into the middle of it all, hoping to claim the throne and the kingdom for themselves. I'm the hero. Yeah, true you are, buddy. <sighs> I love the sound effects. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. Um, wonderful concept here. I was so in love with the uh animation style here and you know there's no doubt yeah. i feel like in our mind that this was the the winner for um custom animations right every all these little pieces the heroes animations the enemies and the world when you you know when you die and jump and all those wonderful they're so well done me the stop motion <laughs> vibes stop motion clay Oh yeah, animations. Absolutely. I don't think I've ever seen a claymation game in a, in a game jam. I could be wrong or misremembering, but it was it stood out to me because of that, for sure. Oh, and the the go. claymation element too, where you're like picking up things from your world, right? You've you've you take the blocks that are underneath you, and those have then been molded, and that's what you use to like attack enemies and other folks with. It's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, that nails the theme, too, like, really well. You're basically taking away your own space the whole time. <laughs> um, yeah. Chat, chat. That's what, that's I said my new screeners, right? I, yeah. <laughs> this one is definitely challenging. Well, I think that's one of the funny... 
can be one of the funny parts about game jams too is right like you as the team that's been developing you've been playing it through all its various iterations and usually become really really good at your own game but for others that have not <laughs> it can be certainly more challenging <laughs> but yeah right, this, this is, is the furthest i've ever gotten i won't lie to be impressed <laughs> like same <laughs> I do love how each of the enemies have this very distinct... Just, the design overall is great, and their attacks... Oh. Didn't even get... Okay. Oh, no. I did mention my skill earlier, right? <laughs> I don't think I've ever gone this far, though. So, uh, Amber, she is saying that... General advice. Take it slow be evasive, and take tiles from the edges and work your way in. Help from the immediately team. does not take that advice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take this one in the middle. <laughs> I like to give myself a challenge to my own detriment. I mean, I killed it, right? It's really easy to pick up a tile and then fall through that same hole that you just made. <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah. that is my time. biggest problem. Like, I do that <laughs> so often. I'm just, like, pressing down on the key and just keep going. So I'll pick up and run down the hole purposely, almost. Yeah, you gotta turn around as soon as you pick one up. <laughs> I must admit, that makes it even more fun for me um, when those silly mistakes that you could have avoided happen just because you're not taking your time. And... Yeah. I really enjoy the energy of the game. And there's there's something to be said as well about the the clay motion as well, because I have distinct memories growing up of um, I don't know if anyone knows of that, heard of them, like rhubarb and custard. They were like a stop motion kind of video animation thing. Um, I thought you were going to say Wallace and Gromit, because that's... That would no, be I'm, Rhubarb and Custard, I think, goes, like, might be older? Um, hey, I done it, see? Currently talking about nice. my childhood is key. GG. <laughs> <laughs> Traveling in the... Trauma, question mark? <laughs> now I don't... Now I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, and now you're trapped. <laughs> this is fine. It's fine. <laughs> so good. Well, we can we could save you, Sky. Oh man, watch out for that beam. <laughs> um, All right, I got this. But yeah, well, so more. many, maybe not. Many, many congrats <laughs> to. Uh, work hard, clay hard for reclaim the kingdom. <laughs> Love the pun. Um, and yeah, so we will be moving on to our next modifier category, which is, is this real life? For the best XR game submitted to the jam. So winners of this category will receive an Oculus Quest 2, the Houdini Indie License, the GameTextures.com subscription, a virtual reality game kit from Diviver, and marketplace assets from Code Respawn and Maui. So, without any more on that, the winner of the Is This Real Life category is... Quarters Cloud! Uh, we're going to play a video on this one because trying to do VR live is always a challenge. <laughs> so... Let's see. For Hoarder's Cloud, it is the not relaxing experience of taking care of plants on a VR, uh, in VR on a rooftop that's in the clouds. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> nothing like trying to, to balance <clears throat> your, your plants on the roof, right? I, I don't know. I personally struggle taking care of plants as it is, and they're not about to, you know, fall off the world. <laughs> Play 
facing Man. all the cacti. Such organized chaos. I, I love that. What well, organized? <laughs> <laughs> Organizing <laughs> chaos. <laughs> Barely constrained chaos, I think is the better way. <laughs> yeah, so Does it throw it back at you? Cloud, what a team. Or, yeah. Yeah. But just very all around, very clean experience. Um, feels really good. You know, like, it's very clear what you need to do, where you can go, where you can place things. Um, <laughs> Now, how successful you are at those things, debatable, but... <laughs> I want to know how they get these in the supply of, of plants. I think I need their supplier. On top of, what's the trebuchet they're using to get it up here? Like some weird slingshot <laughs> system to just launch it up here? Seems really dangerous with um, cacti. <laughs> <laughs> I just love how they come flying at you. It's pretty great. <laughs> there, there's it's a like, German song about a cactus falling falling from a balcony. I just have to think of that one. <laughs> falling into somebody's <laughs> face. I hope I hope that doesn't happen in this game. But... <laughs> I feel like that song could have been very much written about the person that's here. <laughs> or maybe it inspired the team that was playing it. Or that created it. <laughs> But we got uh, Victor in chat. You know, he was helping us judge some of these games. Apparently, Victor got to 24 plants. I feel like if you have 24 plants on your rooftop, you're really you're really winning at life. <laughs> there are worse but things to hoard. <laughs> Just throw it out Absolutely there. true. But yeah, so. Congrats to, again, to what a team for Hoarders Cloud. May we all aspire to be the plant hoarders on the rooftops that <laughs> they have enabled us to be. <laughs> awesome. And let's see, what's next? Ben, this one's for you. Next up is the procedural magicians category for the best game that used Houdini from side effects. Yeah, a lot of awesome games uh, used Houdini. I actually did stream all the procedural magicians games, so you can check out my streams on my Twitch or YouTube. Um, probably should mention it's kind of, it was a combination of being a good game with the you know normal scoring and a cool use of Houdini. So there might have been some games that had cool Houdini stuff, but then the gameplay wasn't great, or maybe it didn't fit the theme. Uh, and then other games, you know, that were really fun, but maybe used Houdini a little less. So it was kind of a balance between those two. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun playing them. Great to see what everybody did. And uh, yeah. Do I announce right. the winner, or do you? You can, if you're feeling it, or I'm happy to jump in. Okay, winner, Procedural Magicians. Yeah. Drum roll! <laughs> it is called Mr. RPD, which is Mr. Programmable Robot of Doom. <laughs> PRD. <laughs> PRD. From okay. Moonwalk Games. <laughs> So yeah, I think I think this is also a one-person team. Um, play it, check it out. It was really fun. Houdini was used for procedural assets for the level. I thought it fit the theme really well. We have that time on it. <laughs> this in the top corner, you're all running out of space. And then it's this kind of thing where you go through the level first and do stuff and then hit play and see if it works out. I don't think that... And then you gotta get through there in time. See, the clock is always ticking. <laughs> uh, run it. I think he will kill you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
He tries, <laughs> yeah, but he sometimes, fails. Sometimes you can just outrun them. <laughs> Generally, you try to kill those guys, but sometimes it works out. You never really know exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> But yeah, I like the uh, the level design, the level art, the food for this stuff. Also, some stuff you don't really see, like UV unwrapping, uh, curvature map making. It's just a great, a great premise. I just like. I think the gameplay is a lot of fun. I think it, it you have to think a bit. Yeah, it's a puzzle game. Kind of got to plan ahead, plan your route. I always thought it was funny too, just shooting at these guys who don't move, and then seeing what happens when you hit play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> always struggled on this level specifically. Yeah, but it's like a great, like, sort of, uh... It's almost like a like a machine learning sort of thing, right? Like you're this is like mm -hmm. machine learning visualization, right? You you have a fail state, then you go back and then you you address what happened, yeah. what caused the fail state, and reiterate. Here is, yeah, like shoot that guy through the window. Bear trap is gonna kill you right there. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna go well. Yeah, the bear trap's gonna. Oh, <laughs> go go go! Oh. oh. <laughs> Oh no! So close. I thought you did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, how they just you continuously looking down. Is that a window? You, know, you have to work? make sure. There's a window, yeah. Shoot him through the window, go back the way you came. Or, I guess you can kind of sneak around that bear trap. I wonder if that guy's going to shoot you, though, before you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what happened there. They can just turn around and shot you. Let's ignore the first guy. I think Bear Trap will do it either. <laughs> oh, or not. <laughs> I did beat the game. You can win it. And at like one point, you get into you get a real time module or something, and then it just becomes like a regular game. Like you're running through the levels in real time, fighting them. Just kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like a totally different experience. Adaptive. Yeah, it kind of just changes the mechanic, and uh, but yeah, nice little complete game. Wonderful. I can see this one, you know, being worked on more, having bigger levels, different enemies. They're just that one's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. It is definitely enjoyable, though. Um, frustratingly so. Um. <laughs> oh yeah, this is a, this is a time waster worth your worth your time, I would say. <laughs> yeah, Love nice it. work on that one. Congratulations. Congrats. So, yeah. So again, that's Mr. PRD, programmable robot of Doom from Moonwalk Games. Doom, Doom. doom. And. <laughs> Our last modifier category is for the Tiny Award. So that's the best game that is less than 150 megabytes in size, and that's the um, packaged playable game itself. So the Tiny Award winners will receive the Houdini Indie License, the GameTextures.com subscription, and Rat Marketplace assets from Code Respawn and Maui. So. For the Tiny Award, the winner of this modifier category is Seekers by Microwasp. Surprisingly, that game is super tiny. <laughs> and so, Steve alarmingly so. <laughs> Which is great. Um, so. You all have seen a bit of that, so we don't need to jump in and play it at this moment. But yeah, that game came in and was definitely under the 150 mark and mm -hmm. super well built as it was. And so congrats to them for the tiny award as well. Congrats. Yeah, to 
I think it was specifically 130 megabytes with the prerequisites, um, which is crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so well done for that, working that magic. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're getting into our finalists. The top three dun, dun, dun. teams of the 2021 Epic Mega Jam. So for third place, these folks will receive a box Intel Core i7 processor from Intel, an RTX 3070, and the GeForce Now service uh, or features and spotlights from NVIDIA, Houdini Indie license from SideFX, a one-year membership to the IGDA, GameTextures.com subscription, um, 10,000 DA points for Art Actor Core from Reillusion, and the um, three original Boom Library SFX packs of their choice from Boom Library, and the Marketplace assets from Code Respawn and Mobi. So all kinds of things. Uh, third place will be taken home. All right, we ready to dive into our finalist winners? Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, right. Let's, let's run. Goodness. All right. <laughs> In third place, we have <laughs> the Rat Way Home from Flying Bear. Ooh. Yay! Nice. Oh, nice. This game was cool. Woo. We'll so, start from the beginning. Definitely gave me like, like some really awesome okay. like little nightmares vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. One thing I found first when first playing this, the best thing I think was the way that the tutorials are done. Um, it slows down time anytime a new mechanic has been introduced, um, so that you can take the time to actually appreciate it while not just completely stopping your gameplay experience. I really enjoy that, um, which is amazing. Um, so the premise here is that you have to keep your little baby mouse here alive um, and traverse this house um, that is cluttered and hoarded um, from this man that has dementia. Um, and as we progress through, you'll hear some of that as well, which is a really neat way of putting that across. Um, but you've also always got to remember to feed your little mouse, <laughs> hmm. which I often forget about sometimes. Little Mouse is a, it's a growing child. It needs a lot of, a lot of cheese. A lot of cheese. I mean, who doesn't want But I'm like cheese? that too. Like, yeah, that's exactly. Right. Cheese is life. Literally for this mouse, but... My tactic has just been to kind of space them around, um, and then... So I can kind of forget about the mouse, <laughs> and just explore. Um, I really like the choice they made to not really... They like the the really like toned down, like no textures, just like flat mesh, like gray color, gray tone. I don't know, and, but uh, I just like the way, the minimalistic feel of it, right? I almost feel like there's something to be said about how that works with um, their conceptualization of the theme. Um, in you know, the old man is losing memories through, like, dementia and stuff like that, and so his world is kind of colorless in that sense, and, you know, the people around him are also trying to bring a bit of color in. Um, and they use um, a lot of color to, obviously, with the cheese and stuff like that, and as we progress, you'll see more mechanics. There's, um, like, a, a poisoned cheese and stuff like that that has a different glow to it, so the aesthetics of color choices have been done really well um, as well. Yeah, there's there's sort of 
you know, multiple layers to the, the theme on this one, right? It's, you know, not only is the the old man running out of space in his mind for memories with dementia, but there's also the element of hoarding in the house or the, the, or the apartment. Um, and so the actual physical space is running out. And then as these obstacles bear in on the mouse, you know, the or the rat, like she doesn't have as much room either to get around. And so there's, there's multiple levels of this um, that are at play. And it's really cool. I love seeing the different levels of the theme um, and not just one, which is uh, super unique. So here's the poison cheese. We can go ahead and grab and get rid of so our little baby mouse doesn't. Oh no. I don't know Just what happens away. when the baby mouse has the poison cheese, but I, I don't really want to find out. It gives you an alarming <laughs> message. So, and it go the baby goes for it pretty directly. You know, as 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 babies do. <laughs> yeah. Take damage if you fall off. Nope, no damage. Got it. I don't believe so. I never actually, I never actually tried. Which makes me a bad MMO player at that point. First thing you're supposed to do is try to jump <laughs> off something. Okay, moving on in. Introduce. always gives me a bit of anxiety. Um, there is a slight loop in this section, um, but that just kind of creeps me out a little bit even more. <laughs> You'll see why in a second, because of that bit, I'm just... For some reason it gives me slight uh, Nightmare Before Christmas vibes. <laughs> Not sure why. I can see it. Have to get the next toothpick. Oh, I didn't see his feet there. Oh well, <laughs> you got stepped on. I didn't even know you could get stepped on. <laughs> the more you know, makes sense though. Yeah, let me do a quick. In, in some ways, I do wish there was um, a way to kind of mute the, the little mouse <laughs> um, from needing cheese for a little while, just so you can, like, go ahead and explore it in a different way. Oh, like, um, hey, can you hold up for a minute? Stop eating all the things yeah, so like, much? And... <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm running ahead. Hopefully the, the mouse doesn't... It's probably asking me for cheese right now. Squeaking, yeah. When he's yeah. squeaking, it's bad. Go. You gotta feed him. Yeah. Oh no! But, uh, he's gonna go through that way, and I've gotta traverse the straws. Um, oh, I oh. see what you did. You jumped to a checkpoint, basically. Well, that's cool. There's lots of opportunities for puzzles in this. Oh my yeah. god, look at this place! Oh, who are you? I've been waiting outside Your big feet day. walking around are just creepy to me. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you understand? These are my things. We need to protect them. Protect them from what? Also, really good at nailing that sort of mommy and daddy are fighting. I don't want to eat dinner anymore, vibe. They will not take my memories away. The mouse is good. I really do do enjoy the commentary that they have. It really adds something as well. I get up there. Yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> Whoa.
but we don't want to spoil the whole thing. So. Shall we carry yep. on with our winners? But we do include you, or do recommend and encourage you to check out The Rat Way Home by Flying Bear. What what a great title, right? Like what a what a great game. Um just a very unique experience. Um and lots of really wonderful elements to it. So um congrats again to the team. Congrats. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah. Great job. It was fun to play. All right. Mm -hmm. Moving on to second place, which we'll be going home with a box Intel Core i9 processor from Intel, an RTX 3080 Ti um, game jam feature on GeForce Now service, and their Thursday Spotlight Houdini Indie license membership to IGDA, GameTextures.com subscription, the CC3 pipeline from Reillusion, a com one year complete Boom Basic subscription, and Marketplace asset packs from Code Respawn, Pask, and Maui. So. Lots of sweet prizes. We're super excited for them. And so, second place goes to... Drumroll! <laughs> Seekers by Microwasp. So, they... Yeah, so... Um, they did a fantastic... We can jump in and, and play some of them more. I know you, we showed them off earlier, but... Um, yeah, so not only, you know, they really hit uh, strongly in a lot of these in the modifier categories, um, but overall, right, we really, really, really loved the experience. Um, overall, it's just a really well-constructed game. Um, you know, from the menus to the use of assets to the gameplay experience, through all of it, we thought it was just such a, a well done, complete experience. Um, it, and like, it's all, what did you say? It's 130, 130 <laughs> megabytes? Yeah. Like, uh, we were absolutely Blew blown away that, like they hit all of these, these things um, and these different pieces of mm -hmm. uh, the development process, right? It's like, they just really impressed with, um, Microwasp team. I really do like, like the main menu experience. Oh yeah, the, <laughs> the main menu is amazing. It, I, it's like I, I kept going on and on about it when I was talking about the judging. But Sky was telling me that that central piece is just like a bunch of it's a kit bash masterpiece basically. The hive in the center. Uh, I thought that was pretty wild because I didn't even recognize that as a kit bash piece when I walked when I first started playing it. It was just like, oh cool, that's a neat asset, but. They nailed it. Like, I don't know, this this hit a lot of points for me. Oh no, it changed on me. Uh, what color is that? This one? I really like want to be good at this game, but I just don't think I am. <laughs> Just keep practicing. This is my life now. This is all I I shall do. <laughs> I'm I'm okay with that. That's fine. Put some chill tunes. At some point it ends, right? But it says you can keep arranging them if you want to. <laughs> And there's like no pressure at that point. Yeah, I think that's something that um, almost like lures you into that fault, that sense of security as well, is because it is so chill between the music and the colors and just the general enjoyment. You don't feel too pressured until things start piling up. Um, you could quite happily roam around and take it all in and just go with the flow. And so there are some questions in chat. I see you all are saying that they've taken multiple categories. So in the case of um, modifier awards, modifier awards, they're meant to be complementary to um, first, second, and third. So they're individual um, prizes and categories. 
and um, for something like the Tiny Award, it's for the best game that was under the size limit. I'll say it is very rare for something to be in the top three category that is so small, um, but sometimes it's going to happen and we don't want to like fudge around the numbers and things like that to make, you know, to, to shift around what we'll be awarding. So that's for a little bit of visibility into it. We're not going to get super deep, but that's why you'll see some of the um, overlap here. But then, shall we move on to first place? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. You'll have to see this um, this exit screen, though. I love this exit screen. Exit mm -hmm. screen. Um, wait for it. <laughs> the blind panic when I first exited out of the game <laughs> was just... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> All right, so for first place, these folks are going to get a high-end Ghost Canyon NUC from Intel, an RTX 3090, and the Game Jam features on GeForce Now service and their Thursday Spotlight, the Houdini Indie License, the one-year membership to IGDA, one-year GameTextures.com subscription, iClone 7 plus 3DX Exchange 7 Pipeline plus CC3 Pipeline from Reillusion, the one-year Complete Boom Ultimate subscription, and Marketplace assets from Code Respawn, Pask, and Maui. So, in first place for all the marbles, the winner is... <laughs> Body boy by the purple team. <laughs> Congratulations. But yeah, just overall, we felt like it was such a um, very complete experience. You know, you're gathering files. Uh, and uploading to the server before the system inevitably crashes and you avoid your bumpers and the bugs and you're going to compete with your friends to get the highest score. Yeah, overall it's, it's a very complete experience um, throughout the entire game. And as I've said before, like the, the visual fidelity alone and the, the smooth gameplay, it has all the replayability as well. You could keep going. Um, I feel like there is a lot of scope and as well going forward if they were to continue to work on this game outside of the jam and go forward. I feel like there is a lot of scope that is possible here as well, um, which obviously isn't a a point in the jam itself, um, but I would like to see them develop further with some more difficult uh, levels. Uh, in saying that, I know I don't, I'm not the greatest player, so <laughs> um, go somewhat easy on the difficult levels. <laughs> That's the bridge. Let's let's try and find our way there definitely something to be said about the sound effects as well um that just brings a certain degree of joy um yeah they they're really satisfying to listen to yeah also just the general effects like that right there that's just fun I was trying earlier to see if I could get up there without bringing the bridge down, just by bouncing off those two. <laughs> it kind of has like a pinball vibe too, because those things bounced you around. There's times where oh, yeah, it felt like sure. I was a pinball moving around in there. 
I actually like the mechanic of whenever you run over a virus, like the loss of control or the different, like the slowdown or loss of control. I thought that was fun. I, I hate to go find the virus just to, to try to uh... figure out the controls. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a what <laughs> flipping of access always just really perspective wise messes with my head. Um, but it's a really great um, way to slow down the player for sure. I also love the player character so much. Like, how can you not smile just by looking at that? It's <laughs> pretty adorable. <laughs> really cute. Yeah, seriously, well done to the Purple Team. This is an amazing game and an amazing experience. We definitely enjoyed the digital concepts um, behind how you interpreted the theme um, and what that meant for the game of running out of space for the system crash. That's why we're collecting all of these files to upload them into the cloud so they don't corrupt and be lost forever. Oh, too much speed now. This is a jam where I actually, I really enjoyed the, the thousand and one different takes on the theme that we ended up mm -hmm. seeing across. Oh yeah, absolutely. It was just, it was really fantastic to see him. And the slowdown mechanics as well when you get full. Uh... <laughs> you think you're doing really well and then you're stuck on the other side of the map um, as you go in so slowly. Jump is the bane of my existence. I don't think I've ever made that <laughs> jump going up to that one. That's the part that broke me. All right. So, congrats again to Poor Body Boy by Purple Team. Um, really, lots and lots of great games. Uh, this reel goes on. There are over 450 games just in the reel, and um, there's so much. There's so much variety and lots of really, really great, unique takes on the games. And so now that we've gone through our winners, um, we actually want to give a shout out to um, a variety of the other games. There are lots of really fantastic um, submissions, and it is always hard to narrow it down to these these categories. Um, so do you all want to kick it off with some of your favorites or um, even ones that just had uh, unique elements to them that really jumped out at you? Uh, I thought Bridge of Dawn was pretty fun. I actually really liked the the sort of like vibes of the team behind them. It's a, a small group of moms from various parts of the industry that got together and are just uh, making games in their own little indie studio uh, called Mom Mama Makes Games worth checking out, worth following, <laughs> worth worth supporting, I think. It's kind of one of those things where where I, I just like I like the vibes they have. I like the direction they're going, and I kind of want them to get some support so they can keep going with that. Mm -hmm. Another one um, I really love is... Game. Which oh, one? Wait, sorry. Oh, Bridget <laughs> Dawn was the one with the running around yeah. Fox game. I thought you were about to ask me what one was. Gotcha. Oh, oh, oh and this one right out, here. Um, is actually Gov, which I thought was such a really uh, unique um, experience too. Like it, it, it's very like Tim Burton esque, and have some of those similar <laughs> like stop motion vibes to it. Um, a little dark, a little creepy, but you know, like still a very very cool experience. So um, uh, definitely recommend checking that one out too. I liked one that called game. Hold the Light. Mm -hmm. Did you guys play Hold the Light? That one was sweet. Check it out. Shout out to Jacob. 
another one man what team. did you like about it ben <laughs> it's just really <laughs> polished it felt like a whole complete little game um fit the theme had a good vibe had boss battles going any game with boss battles is cool <laughs> and uh yeah it was just it felt like a little complete game hmm. um i was a big fan of page turner so i don't know if you saw you all saw it um uh, in the community but so this game we're linking the ones that we're referencing um is a 2d it's like you're actually exploring the pages on a book and so as the um story continues you actually run out of space on the page because the words are taking up um the space you can navigate um and just the animations themselves are a really cool design and aesthetic i don't think you always especially um in unreal engine i don't think we see a lot of games like that so they're um it was really nice to see something a little different there One game that I really um, enjoyed. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Carry on. Okay. Go for it. All right. Um, one game that I really enjoyed also uh, was Busy Day from SST. So it was a rather small game, just a very simple gameplay loop, but you know, small but simple and also, well, pretty well executed. And especially they um, put a lot of detail on the sound design. And of course, <laughs> we are sound persons. We notice uh, when you know all the all the objects make a sound when you stumble upon them or or you um, carry them around. Um, it's a very, you know, it's kind of a easy to learn and hard to master game that gets uh, gets hard really quick. So if you if you have a moment, um, just want to check it out, I think you definitely should take a look at it if you haven't already. Yeah, there was um, one one of the games that I, I really enjoyed and was absolutely amazing, um, made by one person. Um, with not a lot of engine experience in terms of um like it was the first game they put together which was um flame within ice and this game is kind of like a platformer um that within the theme basically you are a fire sprite of some kind and you have to traverse uh through the map on ice and on the ice there are little ice creatures that will you know kill you if you get hit by them so you shoot your flame at them but as you melt that ice monster you also melt the platform below them and depending on the size of the ice monster it depends on how much of the platform itself is melted um and i spent probably a good four hours um because i try and rush things as you saw with reclaim earlier um i try and jump from platform to platform just shooting fire everywhere um when i made it to one of the bosses um it has this really interesting mechanic that you feel like, ah, oh, yes, I've just just beat this boss, um, especially as it took me so long to get there. Um, and I'm like, all right, I can chill now. I've, I've destroyed the boss. And the entire platform of the entire level was before just starts melting, and you then have a race against time to just keep going. Um, and at that point, my anxiety was just up there. But an amazing game. Uh, well done for that. One that made me chuckle was gotta go fast. So um, <laughs> you're trying to get to uh, the subway <laughs> or the public transit. And so you're trying to like run in, but you just keep like stumbling or it's like as soon as you bump into somebody, you fall over and it's just this like, it's very much that chaos of you're trying to get there, but your character is certainly very unstable. <laughs> And um, I, yeah, I just thought it was a really good laugh. And it's a, you know, there's always different ways to to build games during a jam, right? Like you get some very thoughtful, very emotional. You see that in like Rat Way Home. You get some that are just for the fun of it, right? There is the alien one where they're like slapping each other, trying to knock each other out of the platform. That's like, no, this is my sleeping space. And so you get that whole uh, variety or that log wide variety of games and um i think that's really what's exciting and fun about uh jams or what was the other we were talking about um mr nosy mr nosy <laughs> oh. yep oh, <laughs> yeah y'all were mentioning it in chat too um yeah it was 
so funny but kind of awkward like it made me uncomfortable in some ways but <laughs> um what a like goofy concept and it's like this uh guy has a huge nose and he's just knocking out um various <laughs> things in his space so that you have to clear so you can move to the next room so mm. uncomfortably brilliant <laughs> yes <laughs> absolutely that's a good way to put it let's see what else there was um oh jelly space was probably one of my favorites as well it was um amazing uh essentially the concept is uh you are trying to spread love to these little jelly things that spill out over your notebook and your work area um and you have to shoot love into them and when you do they start turning into like colored jelly baby things um and yeah a really really sweet little snippet of a game but incredible at the same time so well done on those i thought the material work on that one was really good uh the transition mm -hmm was just really well done. Uh, I'd actually be interested in seeing how they did that because it was really just, it was really sweet looking. Let's see, what else? There's so many. Yeah, so many different so games. Many. Do we talk about Bamo Mastoras? Or, I don't know if I said it right, but um, I just thought visually this was put together, it was really cool. Um, so you're, is very classic game but you're these like um it's a local brawler and so you have like four people that are trying to be like the last ghost standing um and so you're trying to bomb the other ghosts off of the platform and um just it just feels it's a defined small experience but it it felt very good right like it's um a complete game experience Let's see. Let's um, see. There was another one that was fun. Uh, well, there are lots Astro more Drunk was pretty. There was a lots that were fun. Astro <laughs> Drunk was pretty fun. I thought that was kind of like a cool, like continuous shooter sort of thing. It was pretty neat. Uh, you're basically like just this little like garbage truck ship, sort of flying around, uh, and you're just continuously shooting these these asteroids that are coming in all over the place. That was pretty good. Uh, what was the one where you were basically like the fat Star Trek captain, and then you had to like you remember the do you know the one I'm talking about? I can't yes. remember the name of it <laughs> off the top of my head. I gotta find but it. But it's like the your superior had been uh, like left or he fired or I don't know. And then no, like... he lost. He lost too much oh. weight, and they they, had, they basically and they tied the uh, power supply to the, the oh, ship. Yes. The Star captains. Chunk. Yeah, Star Chunk. Yes. <laughs> That was that was just funny, and it was the same sort of like fun little uh, game in the same vein as the uh, the bomb game you were pointing out. Uh, yeah. Though it was a single player experience, I think there's a multiplayer option. Like I don't know, I didn't have anyone to play with, but Star Trunk was pretty fun too. Um, gosh, so many. I Ben, you were talking about how you really loved um. Was it one desk and three devs? And so it's like you actually have three yeah. people like crowded around a single desk and <laughs> they're just running out of room from it's yeah. like, inevitably you're gonna funny. it's like snacks, right? And <laughs> uh what else? One what else desk and three devs. Desk? Yeah, three guys like working at their desk and then just kind of food like it's stacking up pizza boxes like the um, chinese food and takeout yeah, various forms of takeout and and it's kind of a puzzle game i guess because you just have to move the boxes around and like the food around and stack them so by the end it's pretty hilarious because you just have these towering pizza box stacks that are like over the characters as like a cartoony style so that one was pretty fun nice work on that one There's so many. Oh, I want a link. Hold on. Let me see if I grab it for you real quick. That was one desk, three devs. Drop it in chat. There you go. <laughs> um, let's see. What else? What else you got? We had Cosmic Cargo. Um, that was another interesting use case. Like, without seeing it in their description, I would have never recognized that they used the um, Kit Basher assets. Right, mm -hmm. like 
because they'd restyled them. And I think they use them for the cargo, but then there's a lot of stuff far away. But yeah, totally unrecognizable, but a very just simple use of them. Um, let's see. Ben, you were talking about, we don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, Dune, maybe. <laughs> Since yeah. the U's upside down, we assume it's pronounced Dune. Uh, Dune or Dun, maybe. Yeah, that <laughs> one was cool too. You're like on this traveling platform. You have to shoot out a grappling hook and grab gears and then use that to build like turrets and like a bullet machine. Mm -hmm. And then you have drones starting to attack you. So kind of like a little tower defense, but the platform's small. So fits the theme. You're always running out of space on the platform. Pretty frantic trying to grab the like uh, resource to be able to build stuff. So check out Dune or Done. <laughs> I'll repronounce it. <laughs> you know, whatever it is. <laughs> um, let's see. Any other shout outs? And y'all, like, all of you should be proud of yourselves. You made something in a week. And I think this is where a lot of um, folks get stuck sometimes, you know, starting a project and finishing a project. And so if you can get through a jam and you've made something like now you've made something right that can go on a resume that you can put that in under your, you know, hmm. put that as a, a, a piece of experience that you've gotten and, you know, employers see that and hopefully you've learned something and had fun along the way, you know, at the end of the day, that's the joy of jams is you get to try something new, you get to learn something you get to, you know, a lot of these games would never, um, be made if it was for a commercial project but hmm. uh, <laughs> right because it's like you need to a lot of those um bit very formulaic uh things or you want to make sure they're going to be successful and this is a chance to play with me mechanics or experiences that um might not be as commercially viable but you get to explore them here and um mm -hmm. you know that's and we certainly encourage you take this to Global Game Jam, that'll be happening in January. Ben, you have a Game Jam coming up too, right? <laughs> yeah, so. the Dini Game Jam. Hasn't been announced yet. That one. Oh, it, Mobby. It will be, <laughs> it'll be early, uh, early December, the Dini Game Jam. Keep an eye out. So we'll definitely, once it's officially announced, we'll make sure to let you all know. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you heard, heard it here first. <laughs> And so, yeah, you know, we, we always hope you all have enjoyed it. We certainly are always impressed with what you all put together in a week. It is it, mm -hmm. just absolutely incredible. And whether, you know, you've focused on gameplay or your environments or worked with a team, like the spirit of it is to enjoy yourself and maybe even meet uh, new people that, We've seen people take their game jam games and turn them into complete projects that they've released on Steam. So if you've got, if you're feeling good about your project and want to keep working on it, like there's no reason you can't, um, you know, they're yours and you should take them and run with them. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I always want to, I always want to encourage people to keep working. Like if you are happy with how it turned out, just in a week, you already created a great like proof of concept. So spend another few weeks on it and then release it and get it out to everybody. Mm -hmm. Let everybody play it. Even if it's mm -hmm. small, you know, put it out for free yeah. or cheap. Let people play it. And I think there's something to be said about um, a lot a lot of folks that have joined the like just jumping into Unreal Engine for the game jam and like this is their first time. Uh, entering something like this in their first game and stuff like that. Really, I understand, and we all understand that it can be disheartening sometimes if, you know, it may not have had that sort of a mention or a, a like a winning submission, but we are all winners in the, in that sense that every person that has submitted is, and I know it sounds cheesy and cliche, but <laughs> you've, you've picked up something that you might not necessarily have touched before with the Unreal Engine. You've, you know, prototyped something new and tried to bring something to life in seven days on limited sleep and high stress. 
because <laughs> we know y'all don't sleep properly um, as much as we tell you to. And there is something to be said about the journey that you've all undergone, whether you're an experienced dev of uh, 10 years or, you know, first time making a game. And you should all be proud of that. And I hope that in the future you'll continue to work towards all of that as well. Like whenever there's game jams or chances just to, you know, test yourself on some weird and wacky uh, concept uh, and just go for it um, because you should, because the things that y'all can do in seven days is amazing. And seeing over 500 submissions of all of these wacky and wonderful things is humbling to see. And you should all be proud of yourself. Well said. <laughs> um, so yeah, congrats again to everybody that participated. Congrats to our modifier winners, our first, second, and third place. Um, these will all be listed on our blog shortly hereafter if you want to revisit them. Again, I encourage you to head over to the itch.io page and play. There are loads of games over there. You know, you have a lot of entertainment ahead of you if you decide to jump over and download a bunch mm -hmm. of these games. So um, please do. We do want to make a note that um, the, on a less fun note, the um, Assembla spaces will not be available indefinitely. So if you do not have a um, version of your game downloaded or all the files locally, we recommend you doing that in the next yes. Uh, 28 days because we'll be yes. those repositories and stuff will be uh, removed. So make sure you have local copies of your games. We do want to give another shout out to all of our sponsors, which of course we're always excited to have so many of them. Um, so we've got Intel, NVIDIA, Falcon Northwest, Kitbash 3D, Reillusion, Boom Library, We Love Indies and Dynamedian, SideEffects, GameTextures.com, IGDA, Assembla, Code Respawn, MAUI, Ascent Combat Framework, and Diviver. Lots of great folks. Um, so always very, very appreciated, appreciative to our sponsors um, for providing prizes and participating and helping us judge. And um, yeah, it's a great time. We hope you all had a lot of fun. We certainly did. Uh, any other final words, y'all? Um, just before, I want to make a note. I see some people in chat asking about how we can, how people can find out about the next jams and stuff. Um, currently, um, we will be working on a survey um, overall community in interaction with uh, the game jam and how it went and a bunch of other things. Um, and that will help us to sculpt um, how we move forward with game jams and other contest events and everything like that. Um, <laughs> sorry if you can hear my child in the background. Um, and yeah, so when we put all that together, we'll send that out and we'll go from there on that. But the forums are always a great place to find out about new events. Um, there's an events category there. That's the one-stop place to be for that. Yeah. So I know some of you are asking, uh, yeah, we'll post the winner's list. We'll update the itch.io page. It'll go on our blog. And um, the jam that you all are referencing in January was the, uh, or that we had referenced was the global game jam, which is a um, separate organization, um, but always a great event. And um, it's all over the world. So it's really, really neat. And we do recommend participating in that. We will let you all know in the future about next year's events. It's wild thinking about 2020 events already mm -hmm. but it's coming up uh but in the meantime we will let me see one sec we do encourage you to uh watch all of our social channels that's where our updates come from for various epic events news etc it is insert social media platform slash unreal engine um <laughs> <laughs> and you will find those um, but yeah, thank you all so much for joining us this week. Next week, we will be covering Unreal Engine 5's new user experience with um, a couple of devs from the team. So hope you're ready to get a peek at that. And in the meantime, thank you all again so much for joining us, for participating in the jams. Please know that you do just absolutely outstanding work. A round of applause again for our sponsors and guests today. And may you all have an absolutely wonderful week. Great work, everyone. <laughs>
Take care, everyone. Bye, everyone. Well done. Take care. Bye-bye.